Let's pray. Father, thank you very much, Lord, for giving us another opportunity to come together and to study your word, O oh God. Lord, I pray that your presence be with us and your spirit may work, uh, work in our hearts and minds so that we may be able to receive and understand what you want to communicate to us, Lord, what you want to teach us. Lord, I pray that your special anointing may be upon Pastor Dan so that uh, your voice may be heard through his mouth, O oh Lord. We want to hear you. Our discussions may be helpful to each other and may bring glory to your name. The hour we spend in your presence, O oh Lord, may be profitable to our spirit and strengthen our heart and faith. Lord, we submit this time on each and every participant, and especially Pastor Dan, into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Praveen. And uh, today's subject, I think you probably have uh, seen on the on the post, in the WhatsApp post, uh, the title goes like this. Why don't we see miracles today like the apostles did? And if I can uh, uh, just uh, confirm that this was a question that was asked by Mr. Sanjeevara and uh, uh, basically trying to do a one-off study today because uh, I think next time Praveen will pick up the series that he started on uh, on curses. So, uh, so let's discuss this one today. Uh, this is a a question that is commonly asked, uh, and it does cause some kind of confusion because obviously when we see. Uh, the time of Jesus and the time of the apostles, uh, the number of miracles and the, 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 the what do you call it, the, uh, uh, the extent of miracles were indeed amazing. Uh, Jesus raising the dead, uh, you know, many people being healed and healing in extremely uh, you know, amazing ways, for example, for a, for a lady with a bent back to be straightened or for a person who's blind to suddenly see, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the limbs of someone, you know, suddenly becoming okay for them to uh, use. So these were amazing miracles. And if you look at the apostles, the time of the first century church, in the book of Acts, it says that even as Peter's shadow fell on some, they were, uh, you know, healed. So the, the miracles were indeed quite, uh, you know, extraordinary. And so the question is, why is it that we possibly are not witnessing such kind of miracles today? And there are some statements in the Bible that tends to, you know, uh, make it a little bit more difficult for us to accept the fact that we don't see such miracles. In fact, uh, like, for example, Jesus said in, in John chapter 14 and verse 12, he says, very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. So when Jesus says that there will be, you know, uh, miracles accompanying the work of his disciples uh, later, uh, once again, the question is, are we seeing such things taking place? Now, uh, this particular scripture that I just read might have some questions raised in your minds, and I will address it later. But let us come to the, I mean, let me make an admission as even as we proceed with the subject. And that is the question that we are asking, of why don't we see miracles today, like in the days of the apostles? I must admit that there is no complete satisfying answer from the Bible uh, in the sense that we don't have a clear statement as to 
why we might not see the way we witness in the Bible. A clear biblical answer is not available. Now, we can only speculate and hence, uh, you know, to whatever extent we might, you know, and try to understand this, I want to reiterate that this must not affect our faith. It must not disturb or diminish our faith for uh, a response to this particular question or a lack of it. All right. So I just want to make that clear so that we don't have an illusion that, you know, we are going to get a very clear cut answer for this. Now, as I was uh, studying the subject, obviously, there are many aspects to this, and I want to make some general observations uh, with regards to this subject, and uh, then proceed to, to you know, give you an answer as to uh, how people look at this particular question. Now, let's uh, go to these general observations. The first one is actually a misnomer. When we say we don't see miracles today, we are presuming that miracles happened all the time in the Bible, that the Bible is just full of miracles, signs, and wonders, right? And that is actually not a correct view. Now, obviously, there are periods of time in which we have we can witness in the Bible, uh, you know, very very powerful miracles taking place. For example, the time of Moses and the Israelites coming out of Egypt, we definitely see uh, extremely powerful miracles taking place, uh, and accompanying what Moses said and the exit of Israel from. Uh, from Egypt. That was a period of time when miracles, you know, uh, took place uh, quite extensively. Another period of time was the time of Elijah. If you see Elijah's time, a uh, lot of miracles took place, you know, in fact, earth shattering miracles took place. So that was another time when uh, we can very clearly attest to the fact that there were tremendous amount of miracles taking place. And certainly in the time of Jesus uh, and along with Jesus, the apostles in the first century church. Um, but we must recognize that there were extended periods of time when there were no miracles. So we must not be under an illusion to think that miracles kept taking place, you know, uh, regularly in the Bible, there were, there were, like I said, extended period of, periods of time when there were no miracles. And even in the first century church, even in Jesus' time, there wasn't, uh, you know, when we, were, we, when we were expecting miracles, it didn't take place. For example, John the Baptist, uh, you know, there were not too many miracles taking place accompanying the ministry of John the Baptist. In fact, we hoped that he would be uh, protected from the Herod, the king, who finally had his head, you know, him beheaded. Uh, we did not witness a miracle of protection for John the Baptist. And similarly, many of the apostles finally died very gruesome deaths. They died martyrs. And there were no miracles to protect them, to provide a protection for them. So I just wanted to, for us to be clear in our minds that at the time of, uh, I mean, rather, if you look into the Bible, there were extended periods of time when there were no miracles. And there were times when we would have expected miracles and it didn't take place. So Let's be clear about that. And even as I talk, it is uh, just wanted to invite uh, and wish Surya Murthy joining us. <laughs> uh, just wanted to mention that our subject today is why don't we see miracles today like the apostles did? Okay, let's move to the second general observation I would like to make. 
The second observation is, is that to say that no miracles are taking place today is an exaggeration, right? Probably false. Because I believe that there are miracles taking place today. We might not witness it or see it in the way we have seen it in the uh, biblical times. Maybe it's not as widespread. Maybe it's not as dramatic. But there are miracles taking place today. Many Christians do attest to miraculous events or occurrences in their lives. And the testimonies we hear from Christians uh, do claim that they have witnessed and they are recipients of miraculous events in their lives. Well, in my own, from my own personal perspective, I have seen God's hands in my personal life, in the church life, because there is no other way to explain some occurrences that have taken place or some protections that we have received, some events that have taken place, nothing, we cannot explain that except the fact that it was a miracle, right? Just to, just to, you know, mention one or two. I mean, I remember escaping death at one time in an accident. That was when I was, when I was riding a two wheeler uh, and uh, I could have died. And I, I believe there was some protection that I received. Uh, many of you know that we struggled with a tax case, which went on for almost 13 years. And uh, <clears throat> we can definitely say that we saw God's hand in finally being delivered from that particular problem. Our property in Hyderabad, we could have lost it because they were... Uh, land sharks who were trying to steal our property. And it was amazing how we discovered it. It was nothing short of a miracle. What about the reformation in our church? Would you believe that was a miracle? I certainly do. I don't think we, could, we would have even been willing to consider the reformation if it wasn't for the intervention of the Holy Spirit. So, uh, you know, and also the conversion stories of those, many of those who have come to faith, especially from uh, totalitarian countries, countries where there is, you know, Christianity is uh, banned. It's amazing. Some of the stories we hear of people, you know, coming to faith uh, and those are nothing short of miracles. So we must admit that to say that there are no miracles taking place today, I think is definitely not correct and would definitely be an exaggeration. Okay, let's move to our third general observation. Miracles, signs and wonders do take place, but we must also understand and recognize that the Bible prophesies that sometimes some of these lead to deception. There are signs and wonders performed by certain individuals that are actually used by the dark forces to deceive. Let me read you uh, a scripture or two on this. One is from the book of Matthew chapter 7, of uh, a very familiar scripture for all of us. In Matthew 7 and verse 21, Jesus talking to his disciples says, On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And what is the response that Jesus gives? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you evildoers. So uh, signs and wonders and miracles and miraculous events are not necessarily sacrosanct. They're not necessarily something which is always good. They sometimes lead to deception. Let me read you another scripture in the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 
beginning in verse 9, it says, the coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie and all the ways that wickedness, wickedness deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and to be saved. Verse 11, for this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will, they will believe the lie and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness. So here is an attestation by, by the apostle that sometimes signs and wonders, miraculous events can actually be a lie, can actually be used for deception and to lead people away away from the truth. So what can we, what can we glean from the scriptures that I just read? And there are many more. We won't have time to look into all of them. These scriptures very clearly show that uh, there are miraculous events taking place, unfortunately, in an adverse manner, in a negative manner, in a way that actually causes problems for God's people. You know, and sometimes even God's people are deceived by these miracles. And these are also done by people who are taking or trying to take advantage of God's people. And so signs and wonders or miraculous events is, is cast in a very negative light as far as, uh, you know, even Jesus and the Apostle Paul is concerned. So if I can say, maybe I'll put it this way. The presence of signs and wonders or miraculous events does not provide a, any guarantee for safety or salvation or that God is at work or not at work, right? So we must be careful about that. Let me make one more observation. With regards to signs and wonders and miraculous events, Jesus actually makes an adverse comment about it, right? And let me read you the portion of scripture where uh, Jesus actually looks down upon signs and wonders and miraculous events. Notice in Matthew chapter 12, beginning to read in verse 38, then some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law said to him, teacher, we want to see a sign from you. He answered, a wicked and adulterous generation asks for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And I'm sure you will remember what he goes on to say about the three days and three nights. But I am not going into that particular issue. Uh, what I would like to for us to notice here is Jesus says a wicked and adulterous generation asks for a sign. In the, 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 the response of Jesus is so strong that to me it indicates that Jesus does not appreciate the obsession with miracles. Jesus does not want God's people to be obsessed with miraculous signs, right? Uh, because we as God's people don't constantly depend on miracles or signs and wonders all the time. Our faith is not driven by miracles. Our faith is what, who Jesus is. And the fact that he is the son of God and he has done enough miracles to show that he has the words of eternal life. And we must not be seeking after miraculous signs all the time, or at least I must say, we must not become obsessed with this. Okay. In other words, constantly aligning our faith with miracles is actually not depending on Jesus. We are depending on miracles. We are looking at miracles as a savior, not Jesus as the savior. And, in, and might I also say that sometimes our faith is not helped by miracles. We know the famous story of Israel, who failed in their belief in spite of the fact 
that they saw such powerful miracles. They were witness to such tremendous miracles and yet they uh, refused to believe in Yahweh, in the true God. Also, if you remember, uh, in the New Testament, Jesus told the rich man, this is Lazarus and the rich man, he said, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, I'm breaking into a thought there. I think you, you know the story. If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. <laughs> that's a miracle. And of course, that's a reference to himself. He rose from the dead. And if they have, if you know, the Pharisees were able to see Jesus alive and rising from the dead, uh, and they were still not convinced, what is the use of signs and wonders? Why do we give so much importance to it? So that is what Jesus is trying to question here. See, one Christian author, uh, he says the following. <clears throat> he says, a faith-based or nurtured exclusively on signs rather than on the reality to which they point is immature and at grave risk. Mature faith rejoices in what signs it perceives, but does not depend on them. So basically the author is trying to say that our faith is immature. The, our faith is at risk if we constantly look for signs and wonders. So we must not be obsessed with signs and wonders. And that is the point that Jesus is trying to make. What we must understand is the lack of signs and wonders is not a proof that God is not working in the church. It is not a proof that God is absent. Right? We don't need signs and wonders to think that only then God is with us. No, that is not true. And we know that from even from the times of Elijah, the lessons that Elijah learned. So let not signs and wonders and miraculous events be a distraction for our Christian walk. All right. So let me leave that point there. If you should have any thoughts or comments on that, you can come back to me on that. Let me move then now quickly to the most common explanation or explanations, there are more than one, the most common explanations with regards to why is it that we do not necessarily witness as many miracles today or, you know, amazing miracles that we seem to read in the scriptures, right? What is the rationale that some people give for the lack of these miracles uh, today? Let me read you two scriptures and then pick up one of the points that is made with regards to this particular question. In John chapter 6 and verse 14, it says, after the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. See, right here, once again, there are many scriptures. I'm just, I'm just picking up one or two. This scripture indicates that there was a purpose for the miracles. There was a purpose for these signs and wonders. What is the purpose? And the purpose was to show who Jesus was. Right? That seemed to emerge from the scripture in John chapter 6. That suddenly people began to recognize, indeed, he was uh, the prophet. They, they say he was the prophet to come, basically trying to show that he was the Messiah. All right. So <clears throat> the purpose for miracles is to attest to the fact or to, uh, to you could say, <clears throat> to verify the authenticity of Jesus and his revelation to the world. Right. Let me go to another scripture in Mark chapter 16, and I must make a disclaimer here because uh, there are some, uh, you know, controversy about this Mark chapter 16. 
uh, the earliest manuscripts, they say, do not have these verses. Uh, some people believe these verses were inserted later on. And of course, I don't want to go into the entire story of why they were missing or how it came to be uh, accepted later on. But for, uh, for the sake of the argument, let me just read to you these controversial verses. And this is Mark chapter 16, beginning in verse 15. It says, he said to them, Jesus is speaking to the disciples, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. Right? So you see Jesus is mentioning and talking about these very uh, significant signs and wonders that will accompany the preaching of the gospel. Right? But notice, it is to accompany the preaching of the gospel. Right? These signs will accompany. In other words, why are signs and wonders, uh, you know, a, a sort of, uh, uh, rather, why, should, why do we see, why do we need signs and wonders? It is to attest to the gospel message, that this message is true, this message is real. This message is proved by the fact that there are these signs accompanying it. And if you look at the list of these signs, they were definitely available uh, or rather they were definitely accompanying the apostles. The early apostles definitely saw all of these things taking place. So one of the things we can conclude, once again, I'm just stopping at these two scriptures. There are many more. Uh, what we can conclude is the primary purpose of miracles was verifying the authenticity of God's revelation and signaling the coming of the kingdom. This seemed to be the primary purpose of miracles, right? Miracles were available, were done to prove that Jesus is the Messiah. And indeed the kingdom has arrived with him and it has broken into this fallen world. That was the primary purpose of these miracles. Right? So what uh, the conclusion is that this has already been accomplished. This has already been done. It has already been proved that Jesus was the Messiah he rose from the dead. The apostles went on to preach him and the church was established. And so the argument is there is not a need. There is no necessity for these miracles to continue to take place. And maybe that is one of the reasons why we may not necessarily see very powerful miracles taking place today. That does not mean to say miracles don't play, take place today. It's only a way to explain maybe the reason why we may not necessarily see uh, so many miracles because people are still coming to the faith, right? And in places where miracles are needed, is it is taking place. I have heard people attest to the fact that, especially in some villages where there is no knowledge of Christianity, there is no knowledge of, of Christ, there indeed are taking place some, you know, unusual miracles so that the gospel message is attested to the gospel message is verified and authenticated by those miracles so basically miracles are used by god that the revelation has come in jesus christ and in and, and in the apostles right and this was indeed completed during the times of Jesus and the apostles. And so one reason why we don't see these public miracles is the fact that the revelation has been authenticated and it does not need fresh authentication today. 
And hence, we may not necessarily see so many miracles taking place today. So that is one of the ways that we can probably explain uh, the lack of, you know, as many miracles as we see in the, in the scriptures. Let me read to you one quotation from a Christian author. His name is J.A. Whitmer. And he says the following, since miracles in the Bible are tied to God's special revelation of himself and of his program, centering in the Lord Jesus Christ as God incarnate, miracles in the biblical pattern do not occur today. See, miracles following the biblical pattern does not necess necessarily have to be repeated today. That is basically the purpose of miracles, which indeed established the messiahship of Jesus and the authenticity of the gospel message and the revelation of God. Uh, 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 another view with regards to why miracles don't take place as frequently as it, as it was in the biblical times is what is called the cessationist view. Cessationism is something that, you know, I mean, there are two views, cessationism and continuationism. <laughs> Some people believe that all the gifts and miracles that took place in the Bible continues. That is one view today. Another view is that all the, or rather most of the gifts, especially the prof, uh, uh, you know, prophetic and uh, you know, uh, the gifts of miracles have ceased with the apostles. That is another view, right? Why? Because the canon of scripture has been complete. They say, since the scriptures now are available to us, which is what is perfect, we do not need that, you know, authentication of miracles with regards to the word of God. The word of God has been authenticated in the canon. And so they cite a scripture from, I think, uh, the Apostle Paul. When the perfect is come, what is in part is done away with. Once again, reading from one of the Christian authors, he says, the period of miracle working has passed by also as a matter of mere course. In other words, uh, this author believes that uh, since the close of the revelation period, the revelation of, you know, the messiahship of Jesus and the church and, of course, the apostles and the gospel message, since that has already been done, we once again don't uh, require miracles to re-authenticate the message of God. Okay, another view that is taken by people is that faith, the faith that we have today is independent of miracles. You don't need miracles on a daily basis to sustain your faith. What you need is the word of God. What you need is the Holy Spirit constantly con convincing you and confirming the word of God in your heart and in your mind. You don't need miracles on a daily basis to sustain your faith. That is another way to look at why we do not probably see miracles today. You see, they go on to say it is the word of God which produces faith, not extraordinary or supernatural signs. Now, some others say that today there are no miracles because we are all a bunch of pagan people. <laughs> they, they say that we all lack faith, we are all faithless, unrighteous people, we are all sinners and hence God is very upset with us and so he's not performing any miracles. Basically, he blames mankind and blames Christians today that because we Christians are so poor in our faith that there is no miracles taking place. Now, I don't know. I leave that to you, to your judgment, whether that is true or not. Okay, so how can we conclude? I would like to just go ahead and conclude uh, and then very quickly uh, go back to John 14. If you remember, we discussed that. Uh, I will just give you some thoughts of mine on that. But what is our conclusion with what we have discussed so far? First, from a GCI perspective, we assert our confidence 
in the wonder working god of the bible we do believe that god is a miracle working god we have not lost that faith in our god all right uh, and we do believe that god heals we do believe that god performs miracles but here is what we have to keep in mind our confidence is that miracles may happen not that they must i hope you will make the distinction between them our confidence is that miracles may happen in other words we believe in miracles not that they must hence we are invited to pray without ceasing we continue to pray for god to provide us the miracles that we need we continue to pray for healing we continue to pray for intervention of god because we know that god will intervene when he knows is best for us when he decides how he must in terms of a particular event another important conclusion is we must never ever forget the ministry of the holy spirit we have the holy spirit to guide us today right it is not signs and wonders that guides us please do not replace the ministry of the holy spirit with signs and wonders and that is what is happening in some churches today they have completely replaced the holy spirit and the guidance of the holy spirit with signs and wonders and we we are not we we attest to the ministry of the holy spirit not to the ministry of signs and wonders right the presence of the holy spirit is not necessarily through signs and wonders so that is something that we need to keep in mind and finally uh teaching the word of god faithfully is more important than going after signs and wonders giving the word of god the importance you know having a high view of scripture is very important for christians today rather than just seeking for miracle miraculous events if i can just read to you the last verse in the book of acts acts chapter 28 and verse 30 it says for two whole years paul stayed there in his own rented house and and welcomed all who came to see him he proclaimed the kingdom of god and taught about the lord jesus christ with all boldness and without hindrance it does not say that uh the apostle paul kept doing miracles and signs and wonders it doesn't say that it says the apostle paul proclaim the kingdom and taught about the lord jesus there is no indication that he continued to do all these signs and wonders so teaching the word of god is more important than just going after signs and wonders okay so i leave you with those few thoughts let me just quickly go back to john chapter 14 and verse 12 remember the the verse that we read jesus says verily i tell you whoever believes in me will do the works i have been doing and they will do even greater things than these because i am going to the father right and this has been taken by some to show that signs and wonders must happen today and greater things than jesus has done must happen today now the question i have to ask is what would be greater than what jesus did i mean can there be anything greater than raising the dead bringing life a dead body to life can they can, can there be anything greater than that so what is this greater things that jesus is talking about and what in short once again we don't have time to go through an uh, a complete exegesis of this but uh, the greater work what perhaps what jesus is alluding to is the preaching of the gospel and the people coming into faith and coming into the kingdom coming under the kingdom of god right the fact that many many more people are responding to the gospel message and coming into the kingdom as we see in the book of acts that 3000 souls were added in one day into the church it did not happen during jesus time so this is probably a greater event than even what happened in jesus time when jesus preached 3000 people didn't come into the kingdom of god right so perhaps jesus is alluding to the fact that the greater thing is the result of preaching the gospel and it is going across the globe 
and people accepting the redemption that God has made available. Because there will be great rejoicing in the heaven, in heaven over sinners who repent. That is a great miracle. When people uh, are reformed, when people are, uh, you know, repent and, and come to the faith, that is a miracle. So the greater works is the result of all the miracles that has taken place in the past. And we don't need a repetition of those miracles uh, right now. And if I can say, uh, I've already said it, one of the greatest miracles that we have seen in our fellowship is the reformation. The fact that, you know, we could reform from such a legalistic perspective to uh, coming into the grace uh, and the love of God, right? And if I can just leave you with this last thought, if we can talk about great miracles, if we can talk about greater miracles, perhaps the greatest miracle would be when we show the love of God to one another, right? Jesus said, by this will all men know that you are my disciples, by the love you have for one another. He did not say, by this will all men know that you are my disciples, by the great miracles that you perform. He didn't say that. He said, by the love. And that is a miracle. The love of God is a miracle, a love that can even show grace and kindness to our enemies. That is a miracle. In a world of, full of hatred, showing love indeed is a miracle. Because it is the Holy Spirit working in our hearts that is making that possible. Right? And that indeed is the only hope of a hurting humanity. So let me leave you at, with that. And I think we've got a few minutes for some comments and questions. I don't know if I've answered your question, Mr. Rao, but uh, <laughs> I hope I've given you a broader perspective. But the floor is open today now, uh, at this moment, for your questions, comments, and we'll begin with Surya Murthy. Go ahead, Surya Murthy. I have not seen public signs and miracles, but... Thousands of times, God has intervened in my life and saved me in various situations. These private savings or private miracles, they tell me that God exists. And for no reasons, God gives us thousands of problems and he, and he solves also all, solves all those problems. They are private miracles to me. Thank you, Suryamurthy, for that. Uh, once again, that is a testimony that you attest to the fact that miracles do take place today and it does not necessarily have to be public but it can be private and it has, I'm believing, as you said, it has sustained you and sustained your faith and probably increased your faith. And to know that God is uh, with you and never left you, you know, constantly sustaining you. Thank you for those thoughts. Yes, Bertram, go ahead. Uh, I would like to go along with what uh, Mr. Surya Muthi mentioned. Uh, about private miracles in one's life that sustains your faith and uh, with, uh, uh, you know, with attest to the fact that God is a true God and living God, everlasting King, and that he is involved. And uh, uh, we continue to believe in him. Yes. Thank you, Bertie. Yes, once again, uh, you know, I know uh, since I've had a, such a long association with you, I know how God has been with you and, and helped you through your you know, various issues of life. 
uh, trials and uh, sometimes difficulties you faced. And yes, indeed, we cannot but say that God hand, we could see God's hand in your life, right? Just as Suri Murthy said, we could see God's hand in your life. And many of us can attest to that fact. And so uh, for us to say that there are no miracles today is not correct. Anybody else would like to uh, mention of any particular specific instance of miracles in their lives? Um, yes, go ahead. Uh, I think all, yeah, what I just mentioned, what Surya mentioned, I think all of us can say the same thing. They're just not voicing it. Uh, but I, I feel uh, each one of us uh, has a walk with, uh, you know, walk and talk with the Lord and can attest uh, to what Surimuthi and myself are stating. Uh, they just haven't mentioned it uh, on the Zoom platform, but uh, I'm sure all of us are, uh, who are present and many, many others, you know, would be having God working in their lives and uh, we have to have regard for the same. Certainly, I can attest to that, uh, Bertie, uh, in my in my own life. And I know some of us are just walking miracles. <laughs> Without God's grace, you know, we would not even be, uh, you know, we would just, not, we would not survive. Uh, the fact that he is constantly helping us, strengthening us. Uh, and we should never, ever forget that, you know. It's a forget not the works of the Lord, you know, the good things that he has done for us. So Very important. It's glory be to God. Right. Absolutely. Yes, but any, any thoughts on, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the talk on some people are so obsessed with miracles and, and uh, you know, signs and wonders that their entire ministry is enveloped by that. And I think uh, that can become very unhealthy. Uh, any thoughts on that? Yes, Franklin, I think you had a thought. Yes, sir. No pain in this, sir. The word of God and the Holy Spirit are enough. That should suffice. To live every day. That's right. <laughs> the, the fact that you have unshakable faith in the scripture as the foundation, and the fact now that you depend on God's guidance should suffice. That's right, uh, Mr. Poppins. Right. Yeah, I think uh, that is an important point to make because some people struggle, and I know that I've come across various people who feel that God has abandoned them or God is not there just because they haven't seen a particular miracle or a particular, you know, deliverance. Uh, and that is, you know, even the apostles were not delivered from death. John the Baptist was del not delivered from death and yet their faith remained strong. Praveen, you had a thought? Yeah, I just, especially on this particular thought, I may would like to take a, uh... A uh, little counterpart, <laughs> count, uh, count, you know, a little um, different from what you have said, uh, especially with uh, miracles. As Franklin said, uh, uh, scripture and Holy Spirit uh, suffice. And, but the scripture also, says, scripture itself says, like, you know, God had given some people to perform miracles. He had given the gifts. So the which tells the church requires it. We presently, we might have crossed that level. But uh, still, there may be people whose faith may be encouraged, whose faith may be established by some of these miracles and uh, signs that are performed. I mean, that are performed by the work of the Lord. And one thing we need to uh, clearly see here is uh, one of the parables Jesus speaks, uh, like, you know, wheat and tares. He speaks about a parable where um, the farmer comes and he sows the wheat. And the evil one comes and sows the tares in the in it, and once they grow up, the master, I mean, the servant asks the master, "Shall we remove the remove these tares?" Then he says, "No, let them not. Let us not remove at the end during the harvest. We can remove." That is a word. That's what he speaks. So presently in the Christendom, definitely there are 
there is a need for the church uh, to experience these uh, signs and uh, signs and miracles that is the very reason uh, holy spirit has chosen some people and has uh, installed these gifts in them so it is a requirement but all of us may not be in the same level of level where we require that help uh, but there are people who may require that so second thing is uh, there is so much confusion going around in the world just like the devil the evil one has sown the tears so that is the case presently we are in looking at those we should know we don't need to get discouraged uh, we don't need to make a blanket statement saying there is no required there is no miracles taking place as pastor clearly explained uh, at the same time we cannot even say that we this is enough for me we cannot we cannot say that uh, so at the end of the you know when jesus comes only we'll be able to see clearly which are the uh, wheat which are the tares and he is going to separate them he is going to judge them uh, till then you know as scripture says these are there they are there okay so but we don't put our faith completely we don't base our faith completely on mere signs and miracles because uh, what these signs and miracles do is uh, when, when we put we put our focus more on them we get more and more and more addicted to them signs and miracles are like sign the very word sign itself says a direction it is showing see just look at the sign i'm showing in my hand this does not mean to look at me this does not mean to look at my hand it means look at the direction it is showing so when we talk about the signs and wonders they are directing towards jesus so we should be able to take the signs and go towards jesus what is the point we find mumbai sign but we are not moving forward and we got stuck at the sign board so it won't lead us to bombay <laughs> so we need to we need the signs and we need to take them in the right direction and move forward towards the direction these signs are showing so that may be required and at the same time once upon once again i wanted to say that none of us all the church is not in a place where uh, we can say that we don't require a supernatural manifestation so supernatural intervention of the lord we all require this we all need god's intervention so saying no completely it says we have more and more confidence on us uh, rather than god when scripture itself says It, these are there god is working in those uh, in those way, in those areas in those lines we though we may not be able to experience it completely though we may not be able to understand it completely just with faith we need to take that the god is working miraculously and mysteriously yeah thanks for those comments uh, pravin i think uh, more than a counter or a different view i feel what you said complements what <laughs> <laughs> what we've discussed so far it is coming alongside with what uh, what i said i don't know if you were probably uh, referring to what franklin said yeah absolutely yeah uh, but yes i think we definitely see uh, you know the the miracles taking place and like i said in in especially in in some remote areas uh, where there are really needed uh, there are tremendous miracles taking place people coming into the faith because of that <coughs> right well we have uh, just a minute or two left any any other final comments any thoughts uh, and maybe mr rao if you have any uh, since you asked the question if you have any um, you know if you can tell us that it has been helpful or uh, it has given you some food for thought actually this uh, <clears throat> study is uh, helpful sir i was referring only to the uh, scripture which you have read that jesus said uh, if you believe in me many uh, people can uh, do the miracles right that is not happening i know uh, some miracles happened to me also i was uh, two times i was saved by a deadly accidents i don't know why it happened but it was really deadly so that way god is helping us uh but uh, 
your lecture is helped us mainly as you said that miracles are uh, to show that jesus is a savior and god i think that is uh, sufficient i understand that and i believe that okay uh, good i'm glad that uh, it has been helpful uh, uh, also one thing we also keep in mind is the bible has warned us that even uh, signs and wonders can be performed in a deceptive manner and can lead us astray like praveen was saying rather than following the sign to jesus we can uh, be misled and uh, you know uh, deceived and so perhaps we must also keep that in mind uh, and ask ourselves uh, where is it leading to am i going closer to christ rather than you know uh, materialism and uh, you know and away from christ so we keep that all in mind your if all of you all of you have a minute of time i'll i would like to share one of the small experience that i had in my life uh, which has both sides of uh, this argument uh there were, it was in 2011 i was working with some charismatic groups i was teaching there there are people who are very much eager to, uh, for miracles and all i was teaching in uh, hatsiguda and there was a lady who attended uh, our uh, sessions and uh, as i was praying instantly the miracle happened she had an issue with her heart and uh, she could feel uh, something was taken away and all later she went for the test and it was proved that her issue has been resolved so that is a good sign of it and we were very happy about it we thank god for that and not just one several things happened as we were praying so we i, I and a few of my friends we were very much uh, excited about these things and we were invited to a particular place for prayer so we went there and there came a, a woman who was from non christian background she came and she asked her uh, issue. she shared her issue and she asked us to pray and we prayed for her and then she put 500 rupees note in my hand and said rest of the money i will give you once the work is done so this <laughs> this is the negative side of uh, the same thing and uh, since then uh, i was not completely you know Uh, by thank uh, by god's grace i was not into those uh, i was completely focusing on the scripture and i came out of it so these kind of things can happen so you know we should be careful right this is a case of buy, trying to buy a miracle <laughs> and i'm glad you were not trying to sell miracles <laughs> there lots of uh, lots of people today are trying to sell miracles you know <laughs> by asking for money anyway thank you so much for your time and uh, for your thoughts that you've shared and i hope it has been useful and helpful this is a one off uh, uh, subject we will get back to some of our series which we started a while ago you know and continue on with that to close in prayer if i was i was just wondering vanessa if you are still with us can you lead us in a closing prayer today yes pastor Uh, heavenly father lord god almighty we thank you for bringing us together this evening to share the wisdom of the pastor and all the others who are here who have shared with us so many of their things thank you for the miracles that you work in our personal life day to day some we see some we don't see so many of us don't even realize the miracles that you do in our life but we thank you heavenly father for being in our lives and showing us the way and helping us in difficult times we ask you to lead and guide each and every member of our families our near and dear ones the ones who are even far away the ones who don't have faith in you show them the way guide and direct them let them see the light to you heavenly father we ask you to let let each and every one of us and our families and all the other children around the world hear the word of your son lord jesus christ in lord jesus christ name we pray amen Thank you.